Good evening everybody and welcome to tonight's Monkey Night panel. Tonight we have got Martin, Andy and Steve on. Andy is a debutant so uh, be gentle with him. Um, just a few things from me. Uh, you might have seen on social media that the advisory board, the second meeting, the minutes have now get, gone up on the um, Swindon Town website. So if you have any questions, comments, uh, feedback, um, please send them to the um, OSC mailbox, which is on the minutes, the email address, um, and we can pass those on. Uh, the next meeting is on November the 2nd. So again, if you've got any fan engagement uh, questions or anything of the like, please let us know and we will uh, bring those up at the meeting. The other thing is to our members, uh, we sent out the uh, first newsletter yesterday. I hope you enjoyed the read. If any members haven't received it yet, uh, you will be receiving one tonight. Unfortunately, it was a uh, rather large and um, we exceeded some people's mailbox limits. So we've now sorted that. So um, we'll be sending those ones out this evening. OK, so let's get um, on with tonight and let's get Vic on. Hiya, Vic. Hi, Chris. How are you this evening? You OK? I'm, I'm very good. How are you? I'm very good indeed. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, we should say, and I'm going to say it again because we say it every week, we did ask the football club for a player or representative to join us this evening. I think you'll find out that the answer is negative. So we have asked and we will continue to ask. So i have continued to say it. Uh, I think that's for, worth saying. Uh, Chris, thank you very much indeed. We've got a lot. Uh, uh, can I do a, a couple of housekeeping things before course you I. Can. Yes, of course you can. Um, uh, SAS Travel are taking bookings for Oldham from Thursday. Of course, tomorrow night is a match night. We're at Sutton, so uh, they won't be open tomorrow night, but they will be open on uh, Thursday night between seven and eight uh, behind the town end at the county ground. And uh, you can go there and book for Oldham. And they'd like you to do it as soon as possible because they need to order the coaches this weekend. So if you'd like to do that, you can. Uh, you can reach them on Twitter at SAS underscore travel or email SAS travel at sky dot com. Uh, so we have all those details here. If you'd like them uh, repeated, I'll do it again towards the end of the of the hour. And uh, there is a telephone number. I won't ask you to scribble it down if you haven't got a pen and paper handy, but I will do it at the end. So I'm warning you now. Uh, so I open again on Thursday night behind the town end. You can go and book for Oldham. And uh, two weeks yesterday at the county ground, Exeter City women will be visiting Swindon Town women with a two o'clock kickoff. And I attended the Exeter City women against Plymouth Argyle women Devon County Cup match at St. James Park yesterday. There were 1,300 people there and it was a fantastic atmosphere. So it would be great if we could have similar at the county ground on the 31st of October at two o'clock. It was a penalty shootout, which Exeter won, won much to their great joy. An exciting game. We'd love to see the same at the county ground on the 31st of October at two o'clock. There you are. That's done. And following on from that, um, the supporters club will be um, doing some family um, bits and pieces in the Legends Lounge, um, face painting for the kiddies um, and uh, things like that. So quizzes and stuff. So get the family down in the afternoon. OK, so are you ready then, Vic? Should we get? Yep, to get ready to go. Yeah. OK, so we get Martin. We get Andy and we'll get Steve. There we go. So any questions, please leave them and we will get through as many as we can. And I will see you a bit later. Chris, thanks very much indeed. Welcome along. I just just say, and I'm going to say this right at the top, that we've been experiencing power cuts where I live all day. So I'm, I'm crossing fingers that nothing will happen in the next hour. So there, I'm going to let you know. Um, Andy, welcome. Uh, a debutant for this yeah. evening. Very pleased to have you come. A little bit about yourself, please, just before we get underway. Um, well, retired, um, living down in Weymouth. Um, been following uh, the mighty town since uh, August 1974, uh, when Andy Rowland made his debut for Bury and uh, beat us 2-0. Uh, and so I've been, you know, following Swindon since then. Um, and luckily now, since retirement, I'm able to sort of join them on a home and away basis. Um so I've seen the ups and downs. Um, uh, so, yeah, very much looking forward to tonight because uh, uh, there's a lot to talk about, isn't there? As there ever. certainly is. Uh, Martin, welcome back. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Evening, Vic. And Steve, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Hi, well. Vic. Hi. Hi. Vic. Right, let's start at the very beginning then. Uh, we might as well start with Saturday. 
Um, your initial thoughts, Martin, what did you think? I thought first half we were pretty dominant. At times it was just like a training game. Um, you know, we, Gladwin scored a great goal. I think in some ways we were unlucky not to be more than one goal in front. After half time, it was a completely different game, really. I, I think we were a bit complacent. We switched off. We conceded some sloppy goals. And in the end, it was a bit of a relief just to get a draw out of the game. A game with two halves, really. Yeah, the, the classic, really. Andy, what were your thoughts on it? Well, very similar to Martin's. I mean, we were trying to scratch our head and work out what went wrong in the second half. And, and not, so we we came up with a sort of theory that Dion Conroy might have had something to do with it. He made a couple of mistakes and had a sort of got injured. And he's such a sort of important part of that side. And there's not a lot of players, perhaps sort of like, we've got lots and lots of leaders in there. Uh, maybe so the goals if you actually look at them you know Critchlow and Reed who have been outstanding this year both sort of Critchlow made a sort of poor pass and Reed sort of didn't engage with his gu his guy and um sort of like overloaded the left and um you know one it's sort of like they equalized and then again the the, the equalizer was was sort of Gladwin and their uh, pain not sort of really closing down it was just sort of it wasn't like what we've been seeing for the last couple of games and like you said, we were very lucky to get away with a with a draw, um, but it keeps the unbeaten run going. It does, absolutely. Um, Steve, were you working on Saturday or were you at the game? I, I was working, yeah, so uh, I had the, the, the commentary. But uh, it, you get a feel for anyway. I mean, the first half, the displays were was fantastic. But yeah, second half, I think complacency, like Martin said, complacency crept in. Um, it's only Rochdale, they haven't you know, set the world alight this season in League Two. So they probably thought, well, you know, we just have to turn up in the second half and in, 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 in win it. But, you know, fair play to them. They, they came at us. They attacked us and uh, they got their just rewards. And, yeah, to scrape a 2-2 a against the side that you really should be beating. But our home form hasn't been great this season, let's face it. You know, that's that's this, the, the the issue everybody keeps on about at the moment. But, uh, no, it's it's definitely two points dropped. And hopefully they'll learn from that because they are, they are a young side. Um, there are, there is there is a couple of experienced heads in there, but the youngsters will will hopefully learn from that and you know not to go out and be so complacent um, when you're when you're sort of in a winning position. Yeah, put, uh, the um, comments are coming in. Pete says two points drop rather than three. The question in my mind: Will the grandstand finish encourage another nine thousand plus crowd, mm. or will they remember the preceding forty minutes of non entertainment? I think Martin. The problem is, uh, you know, football clubs kind of live or die financially on home matches don't they and if you don't win your home matches people kind of lose it's great winning away for those of us who go home and away it's, it's fantastic but you know your home matches your bread and butter aren't they yeah and it's, a, it's only a small proportion of your fan base that are going away so if you're going to have your record one way or the other you want to be you know you want to be getting your three points at home and getting a draw if you can away if, if you want that way round, ideally um, I, I think we'll still be good for a good crowd on Saturday. I think the feel-good factor is still there. You're certainly going to have more than 144 Bradford fans. Mm. I, I, I don't think we'll be too far off, sort of nine and a half thousand Saturday. I think, um, I think, I think the fans will still be with us. I think they've got a bit more, a bit of patience. They know it's a, it's a new regime, and you know we're still playing some good football at times. So, I, I, I think we'll get a good crowd Saturday. Yeah, I, I would imagine that Bradford City would be an attractive one. Two teams up towards the top of the table. And let's be, they had 16,000, I think, on Saturday at home, didn't they? I mean, I know their season ticket situation, they're, they're relatively cheap season tickets. But even so, 16,000 in effectively Division 4 is quite extraordinary. Um, this is from Lee, Andy. Not sure what it is at home. I reckon the county ground is cursed. The interesting thing is we were talking about this before we started. If you look back, Dan Hunt provided these statistics a little earlier on today. If you look at home and away over the last four seasons in League Two, the records are pretty similar. Now, normally they're weighed towards home performances, aren't they? Yeah, so yeah. that's where you want to pick your, the majority of points up. Well, it's funny. I, I, I can remember I said earlier about the first season that I, I, I watched when in 74, 75, a long time ago, I know. But I had a look back. In that season, we won 18, we drew three and we lost two. And I always remember Swindon was a bit of a fortress at home. Um, and this problem we've had, it's it's not recent. It goes right back. In fact, the, the last season De Canio was, was in charge, 
we dropped 30 points at home that season, uh, believe it or not. So I think it's been a problem for the last four, five, six years and longer um, because, and I just can't put my finger on why, you know, is it, I mean, this season we've had the nine, 9,000 crowds and it was buzzing come the end, wasn't it? Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't really know. I really don't know. Is it the fact that people aren't on the Stratton bank or uh, I just can't put my finger on why we don't seem to do it at home as, as we do away. Mm -hmm. No, it's extraordinary. Um, uh, this is from Dave. We do have to remember we had no team a week before the season. Uh, from Steve, a decent county ground atmosphere is returning, gets better week after week. From Ian, apart from the 1920 season, home form has been poor for a number of years. That goes back to the point you were just saying, Andy. Uh, from Mark. Hi, Mark. Um, Saturday proved that you have to be at it for 90 minutes. You can't afford to switch off. And from Andy, uh, do pros really underest underestimate the opposition? Well, I'd love to have a pro on tonight to ask him that, but um, we haven't got one, sadly. Uh, lots of questions coming in. Uh, th this home and away, Steve, I, I know you get to away games more than you home matches for obvious reasons. You work behind the scenes at BBC Wiltshire, so, you know, yeah. that's the reason. Um, are we more suited to playing away? I mean, our style seems to be suited to being attacking on Absolutely. the break, doesn't it? Absolutely. I think the teams come here and they sort of, set that brick wall as it were and we can't get past them but no when we go away from home it's fact i think we saw it against forest green in bristol rovers you know we, we were at it um you know we're quite unlucky with with Tari simpson not getting that uh first goal against forest green last week but that was uh disallowed for for nonsense really who, who knows what it was for i mean there was was there a push wasn't there i don't think so um but yeah the way we the, the, the way we play the way ben garner wants us to play is is more attacky it's, it is you know the teams are happy for us to have the ball when we're the away team but I do think it comes all the way back from crowd pressure. I think that there's less away fans getting on the players' backs when things just slightly start to go wrong or it's, you know, it's not quite connecting or they're not shooting enough, they're not passing enough, they're not playing it forward enough or whatever. You hear the cries off in the, in the, in the stands at home. So maybe that's an element of that, you know, maybe more encouragement from the fans would probably spur them on a little bit. You know, they're probably a bit too, they, they say they don't hear it, but they do hear it. Um, the negativity that comes out of the the stand, so maybe that has a part to play. I don't know. There, it's, there's an element of everything, really. Um, but no, the away form this season, you you, you can't complain. It's, no, it's absolutely not. And there's, there's no there's no expectation going away. You know, we're expected to win this one. You know, so maybe that that the pressure's off. You know, it's it's a free hit, as it were. Um, yeah, Martin. I mean, let's be honest. At times, our football's not really exciting and what you want if it is constant pressure going forward you're not going to get that in any football match but does our style of play mean that people don't get as excited as they should be do you understand the point i'm making yeah i know exactly the point you're making i mean our football can be an art at times but it can be a slow art can it can't it i mean it can almost be like we're playing with a handbrake on at times um the last five minutes of the 90 on Saturday and the five minutes of stoppage time, finally, you know, it was a bit sort of gung-ho. It was, it, was, it was exciting. I mean, it's just impossible for a side to do that for 90 minutes. They mm. could just be sort of knackered. It's just not, not going to happen. But I know, exactly, I know exactly what you mean. I think it's a, I think it's a football thing. I think, I think football's actually changed. I think the way, I think probably 20, 20 years ago... Sides didn't play this way, did they? There was something happening every moment, be it a tackle or, or a, a long pass forward. Pe teams didn't build from the back, so it's, it's more progressive style now. It's, it's. I, I think there's an element to what you say there. I, I do agree. Uh, this is from Rob. Not sure if we know how to break down a back five, which I believe Dale went to in the second half. We came out half asleep. Uh, from Stephen, does the manager need to change the system at home to get better results? Uh, from Phil, are we falling into a trap of forgetting how inexperienced many of our team are? I hope we don't become victims of our own unexpected success, which I think is a very fair point. Uh, from Jules, Swindon needs to carry on singing loud support for players, even if at that point we're a goal behind. Players hear you. Um, <laughs> from Steve, um, Swindon prefers to play on mud. And this is a comment from uh, the editor. Steve showing his age there because that pitch really is magnificent at the moment. Uh, from Anthony, we're going to get this when we have a Premier League kids playing. Very inconsistent. And from Michelle, thoughts on why McCurdy was subbed. I thought he had a more active game than Simpson. Uh, Andy, um, Tyree Simpson works his socks off. 
Uh, works all over the pitch. Mm. Uh, Harry mm. McCurdy, of course, has been amazing. And we uh, I think mm. not a Swindon fan around that doesn't love Harry McCurdy right now. Mm. He's just sensational. What are your thoughts on the two together? Well, I've sort of been advocating that for a while because, I mean, uh, Tyree Simpson, we said at the start, is is a work in progress. He still is. He's he's um, uh, he's getting fitter every game. He, he really does put a shift in. Um, and I, I feel sad about him copping the stick he does. I mean, I suppose a centre forward is always going to get stick, isn't he? If he's not putting the ball in the back of the net, no matter how hard he works. I mean, you've only got to go back to sort of last season with Brett Pittman. Uh, um, he got most stick because because he didn't do the work. Um, but you go back further, you've got the Luke Norris's, even the, the Vincent Pericard, shall we, dare we say it. But um, um, I like what Simpson's doing. Um, and it's the first first real time, am I right in thinking that, that they've both started up front, him and McCurdy? They might have done earlier on this season. So it, it was it was working. Certainly the first half it worked, didn't it? Yeah. Um, um, so I think we've just got to persevere with that person. Eh? It's uh, it's the the, the expect the big expectation. See, the thing is with Harry McCurdy at the moment, the whole world is expecting him, or the whole of Swindon Town is expecting him to do miracles every time he gets the ball now. So that's going to be an interesting thing how he handles that. Do you think that miss then? I mean, let's be honest, it was a miss, mm, uh, and most people mm. would have would, would have expected him to put that in the back of the net. Mm. Do you think, in a way, that's not a bad thing? Do you see what I mean? Because yes, it's sort of he, he is know, fallible. Yeah. You know? he, he, yeah, he he is. Yeah, we're probably putting him on this this big pedestal because of what he's been doing the last few games, um, and and that might. I mean, he was incredibly frustrated. I mean, where we sat, I don't know if any, we had a bit of a Decanio moment in the uh, in the dugout. Where, um, I think a bottle went flying across, or he kicked the uh, he kicked the dugout. So whether he was frustrated of being taken off or missing what was, let's be honest, it was a sitter, wasn't it? <laughs> Well, yeah, and, and the way he's been playing at the moment, you would have expected yeah, him you to have, have got that him. goal. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I, I always wonder when that dog out. There's a little label which says Meccano smacked here. Um, I, yeah, I it was the, it was the other side. To be fair, what to was me. it? Okay, yeah. fair enough. Okay, <laughs> um, this is from Pete. One point on the nine and a half thousand crowd. There were some comments regarding part-time supporters. Uh, we need to encourage these supporters back. Not everyone can afford to go to every game. Uh, from Sean, I reckon we would have won if subs were made earlier. Thoughts? Hmm, Steve, now, Johnny Williams, of course, comes on. I mean, you know, we're all sitting there on Saturday going, how many internationals have we got sitting on the bench? I mean, it is extraordinary. I can't ever remember a time like this. Um, Johnny Williams, should he start tomorrow? Um, yes, I think he should. He better do, because I'm going. Um, no, it'd be nice to see him <laughs> play and start for, for us for, for a change. Um, I think he, he's that little bit of experience a little bit of know-how. I mean, you see the impact he had with the, the with this goal he set for Tyree Simpson a few weeks ago at home in the town end. He, he's an, he is a very good impact player, but I think we almost need that from the start, you know, to get really going. Um, one person that has sort of been mentioned is Ricky Aguilar. I was talking to a few fans around. They, they were really impressed with him when he started a few weeks ago. I think it was in the um, Papa John's trophy game. Mm. Maybe playing him alongside Tyree Simpson, you know, little man, big man sort of. He's gone though no, to Chipnam, hasn't he? He's on loan now. Uh, no, uh, sorry, not Aguilar. It was um, Dabray. Dabray, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, have him up front alongside uh, Tyree Simpson. Um, hit, they were quite impressed with what they saw. So, yeah, I, I, but go back to Johnny Williams. Yeah, I think he has to start. He has to. He's experienced. He, he's got the know how and he's got the knack. Yeah, I mean, I think Ian Holloway said at the weekend he should be playing in League Two anyway. Um, so yeah, he starts for me. I mean, I, I've seen him against, I think it was Tramier, um, and against, you know, he, he really came on and impressed, uh, and, and he has, he makes that impact. And I think we need it from the minute get go. Yeah. Let me, um, let me read you a couple of things on Twitter. Um, Martin, I'm just got to scroll down. So bear with me a moment. Um, and I'm, this is going to go, <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to find the actual one. Uh, where it is um so bear with me just a moment uh, swindon at sutton of course uh, tomorrow and away at crew of course in the fa cup uh, looking forward very much to going to that chip shop which is opposite gresty road if it's open this time i'm not sure whether it is or not so many uh, comments have come in um it's regarding the goalkeepers and i'm just trying to mm. just trying to find it because i know martin uh you and i have had a discussion about this uh, Lewis Ward played on Saturday. I don't think you could blame him for either of the goals, could you? No. Uh, the defence were at fault for both of them. So, your thoughts on the goalkeepers? Now, Woodcott, of course, was said to be tired after returning 
from playing in Ghana or for Ghana in the internationals. Lewis Ward continues. And we know we've got another international break coming up in a couple of weeks' time. Annoying though that is. So what happens now? It's a tricky one, isn't it? Because Ward's come in at Forest Green. He's he's had a fantastic league debut. He's saved the penalty. He's kept a clean sheet. He's done everything that's asked of him. Again, in that um, Football League trophy match, he's, he's not really done anything wrong again. Had another good game. Good throw Good throw out for, was it the Mitchell Lawson goal? Yeah. Excellent distribution with, with his hands. Um, again, as you say on Saturday, he's done he's done nothing wrong. Um, it was an easy thing to say from the manager, wasn't it? Um, that Willicott's travelled around, he's tired. So that's maybe, it's, it's an easy excuse to keep Ward in the team. I, I'd be an advocate of putting Willicott back in goal. I think it's easy to forget he was our possibly our player of the season up until up until internationals. I mean, should we be penalising players because they're going off on international duty? I I don't know. I'm a great believer. You should have a number one. You have your number one goalkeeper, and you have your number two. You have your number two goalkeeper. I, admittedly, I know the situation is a bit more complicated. These internationals don't ha- ha- help. Is there going to be one more in November? I think, and then thankfully yeah. there won't be another one until March. So hopefully November's the last bit of disruption. I mean, I'd like to see Willicott come back in. I mean, Ward's going to have some chances again, isn't he? Because we've got another uh, Football League Trophy group stage game. FA, we've got Cup. FA Cup. We've got the FA Cup game at Cruz. You know, hopefully we progress in both of them competitions. So hopefully there's going to be more football for Ward if he does if he does find himself on the bench again. Sorry, what did you say? Progress in competitions in FA in Cup competitions? Is that what you said? I know, I know it's a bit, it's a bit of an alien con- concept, but you know, <laughs> if we can get a draw against Newport, we might go through, and you know we're good on the road, so you never know. You never know. What's your thoughts on that, Andy? Because I mean, you know, you were at Plymouth, and Lewis Ward was superb there. He kept us in the game with two magnificent saves, made the goal. I I don't think he's done anything wrong, is he? No, no, it's I. I it, it's one of those decisions, whatever you do, you're not going to be right, are you? Um, you know, as as Martin said, you know, Jojo Wallacott has been outstanding. He has made a, a critical save in just about every game. I mean, absolute blinding save to sort of keep us in matches. And like you say, Ward comes in and does, and I think we were all a little bit, bit uncertain about Ward, only, only because we'd seen him in the Arsenal game and, and his kicking wasn't fantastic. That was all. But he was outstanding at Forest Green, and as you say, didn't let us down in the in the last two games. But I think probably if I had to make a decision, I would go for Wallacott simply because he was first choice. Um, uh, but then I might be proved wrong. He, he goes as a stinker on Saturday, and and uh, you know we're back to square one, aren't we? So yeah, I, I'll ask your opinion in a minute, uh, Steve. This is uh, from. Al, first half should have led by more. I think they won the game as they came out. Second half too relaxed. Changes should be made a lot earlier. Not sure why they're so good away from home, but very tough test at Sutton on Tuesday. Uh, they're going very well, Sutton, aren't they? Um, so, uh, uh, you know, it is going to be a tough game. Um, so lots of these comments coming in. So do bear with me. Um, but what are your thoughts, Steve? Uh, um, it is a, it's a tough call for the manager, isn't it? I mean, you know, when you've got a recognised number one and a de- and a deputy, you kind of know where you are. But at the minute, we seem to have two keepers who you could class as number ones. They're of equal qualities, I think. I think they had a similar situation with, with Lawrence Vigaru, uh, when he went off to play for Chile. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was replaced for, for a while and sort of was sort of had to fight for his way back into the team. Um, I don't think Wallacott should be punished just because he's gone to represent his country to be sort of, you know, not dropped, as it were, but Ward has come up and he has delivered. Um, but I think it, I remember Ben Garner speaking to us once. He said about disruption to the team. You know, having a, a settled side. If when the players go off from international duty, they come back again, and he's almost got a settled side for the last couple of games. He haven't sort of been around. So it's how much disruption he wants to again. You know, by selecting Wallacott. But I expect the players are probably used to him behind in the defender. But it's, it's it's all about that fine balance, isn't it? Of getting that that you know, not disrupting the team too much because he had a similar thing with Anthony Grant, didn't he? As well, so he hasn't sort of made his way back into the to the squad. Um, since so into the first international uh, games, so I, I I'll go for Wallacott because yeah he is our number one. He, he has got the number one jersey at the moment, um, and he's done he's done nothing wrong. You know he's done nothing wrong, but he's been challenged by a good goalkeeper now. So if he does go back in tomorrow, he'll probably 
be on his A game again in, in making sure that he, you know, stakes a claim to be playing week in, week out. As I mentioned to you before, Martin, the old adage, you know, if you do well and you you've got you're in possession of the shirt, why should you have the shirt taken away from you? It's, that's, I mean, that's a fair point, Vic. I mean, if if Ward is dropped tomorrow or Saturday, he's, he's going to be very, very disappointed. Um, I mean, you'd be disappointed if the players weren't disappointed. You know, that you want players that want to want to play week in, week out. Um, yeah, it's, there's no there's no easy answer, Vic, is there? To it, it's really, it's a really it's one of the toughest calls we've we've had on the goalkeeping front for a long time. Well, it's a lot tougher than last season, let's put it like that, when any of us could have played in goal, quite well, frankly. You just, you just take who you could get last season, wouldn't you, between the sticks, really? Yes. Um, this is from Pete. Hello to you, Pete. Um, where does Williams fit into the side? Behind Simpson, in McCurdy's spot, the three midfielders, Payne, Reed, and Glabin, look pretty set, with Williams replacing Glabin or Payne not really adding anything. Who starts on Tuesday, McCurdy or Williams, Andy? You're the manager. Make that choice. I, we're away. Um, he has a system which he plays away. If you look at the look at the Rovers game, is a case in point here, where we sort of like weren't that good first half. The big change was when when he brought McCurdy and he brought Williams off the bench. All of a sudden, there was energy, there was pace, and well, we scored the three goals. Um, so I've got a. I'm not convinced necessarily that Williams is is ready for 90 minutes. And I mean, Gladwin is actually doing far, far better than than we would normally expect Gladwin to do. I mean, he has he is doing a lot more. So I'd be inclined to really sort of stick to what we had on Saturday, have McCurdy and Simpson up front and bring in Williams off the bench. Um, and I have, I just don't know, it's a gut feeling. It's a gut feeling. Um, I, I, I see what Williams can do. He's an incredibly talented guy. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think um, give McCurdy, get McCurdy, McCurdy a bit of pace in, and then, as you say, Simpson, uh, sorry, Williams is coming on again and gives him a bit more later on in the game. I mean, it is one of those. Yeah. Hey, we got Johnny Williams on the bench. You know, you're yeah. talking, he's a Welsh international, an established Welsh international, for goodness sake. He's one of Gareth Bale's best mates. He's on the bench. It is an incredible thing. Uh, this from Tim. We had a corner in the 90th minute. It was like a library. We had two corners after we'd scored. The noise was incredible. So frustrating. The county ground fans can't raise a whimper when the players need it most. Uh, from Mark, much of the football's been easy on the eye, but Ben Garner must remember that goals are often scored from balls crossed into the box, e.g. McCurdy at Scunthorpe and Forest Green Rovers, a Williams equaliser on Saturday. Uh, from Pete, uh, This from Steve, sorry. Uh, Kessler Hayden wasted on the bench. I would imagine he'll be in with a shout of starting tomorrow. Uh, from Anthony, we should be calling the fixture off as per the rules on international call-ups. Why is Garner happy with a reduced squad? I don't think anybody was calling for Forest Green to be postponed after last Saturday. Although I take the point, and I wonder whether the next set of games they might call for them to be off. Um, Kessler Hayden, then Steve. Um, I mean, he did come off the bench, but I guess he's in with a shout of starting he's, tomorrow, he's, isn't he? Yeah, he's got to start. He's been one of our most impressive players this season. He's, he bombs up and down that sort of you know, defensive wing back role, whatever you want to call it these days. But no, he's he's great, and you know, he's, he has to really use play. You know, you don't sort of get those players quite lightly, but. Uh, no, he's been great this season. And in fact, all the signings, you know, but mm. uh, he, he has been one of the standout ones. But uh, yeah, who would, who would you drop, though? That's the only thing. Um, well, it's a difficult call for the manager. That's why he's paid to be manager, isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. But yeah, I mean, we've got a plethora of players in midfield at the moment. Um, you know, so it's a tricky one there. But no, he's been very impressive. And, you know, I, I have him in my you know starting lineup. So yeah, he'll get an offer for me tomorrow. I wonder if A. Grant might feature in the squad, Martin. What do you think tomorrow? Well, he's, he's almost been like the forgotten man, hasn't he? He's, he's mm. sort of... Has he had some injury problems? He's been on international duty. Uh, it, I think he should come back onto the bench, for sure. Um, I mean, the, the thing is, Reed's come into that sort of defensive midfield role and d done such a great job. Um, it's like, it's not a case of Anthony Grant who, but Reed has cemented his place there, so I think Grant's got to make an effort to reclaim it. I mean, he's getting on a bit, and he's thirty-six years old. I, I, it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if, if we. 
didn't see much of Grant in a town shirt again. Mm-hmm. You know, whether whether that's the right thing, I don't know. But I just I just got the feeling that if he was going to play, Garner would at least have brought him off the bench or got even had him on the bench by now. I I, I wonder if Garner actually sort of fancies him. Well, it'd be interesting to see because he's obviously getting attention now. He's playing for Jamaica, and you, and you kind of wonder whether other clubs, um, not necessarily in this part of the world, but people will start looking at him. Uh, this from Phil Ward's been excellent. Now rest him until the next international break. Not had two keepers as sound as this since Brezavan and Smith, who usually put in a decent shift when called upon. Uh, from Pete Ward's professional, Jojo's number one. He'll understand. Uh, from David, do we think Jojo would have saved any of the goals against Rochdale, Andy? No, no I don't think so. As you, as you alluded to, I think they were defensive errors, weren't they? Um, uh, the, the, I think both had sort of clear shots at goal. So, no, I don't think you could blame Ward for either of those. No, and he wasn't beating his near post. He was beating at the far post of the first mm, one, which mm, went across mm, him. Mm. And the second one player was on his own smacked it in the back uh from andy williams has played wing back for wales um from andy williams <laughs> there's a name from the past um uh, from nick um not everyone can play we have a very good squad where any of the possible uh, 18 players are good enough to start i think we should just enjoy having a top squad at the moment as it doesn't happen that often very very good point uh, from Tony, personally, I think you must pick your strongest side, whoever's missing. But it's not just about 11 players, but a team of 18. And I think, Steve, that is a really, really good point. I mean, here we Absolutely. are, uh, you know, back in June, July, we had about six players and we're thinking, hang on, we haven't got enough for five a side plus substitute. And, uh, you know, here we are. We've got a really, really good squad. I think you and I were, were sat in the uh, stands at Malkshire, weren't we? Sort of going, yeah. oh, dear. <laughs> Um, yeah. and then it was a bit of a different story at, uh, at Supermarine when we uh, suddenly heard a loud round of applause coming out from when Mr. Morfudi was walking around the stands. But yeah, it was literally a, a threadbare squad. And, you know, now we, we're so blessed with the talent we've got. But the interesting point, yeah, I, would I drop Ellis Iandolo and stick Johnny Williams there? I, you know, playing in, in sort of that wing back role, it, it, it could work. Um, but no, we are blessed. I mean, heck, you know, we, 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 I think. Because we had such a good start, our expectations have sort of slightly risen a little bit. And, you know, maybe a 2-2 draw at the end of the season against Rochdale at home might not be so bad because they might suddenly start to perk up a little bit. You don't know. They might now suddenly go on a run. So I, I think we've just got to enjoy it this season. You know, we, 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 were, we were staring into a, oblivion at one point. You know, it wasn't going to be a season. Well, there was, but <laughs> there wasn't going to be much hope for it. Um, so to be in the playoffs, just just, just enjoy it. You know, just that, that's what this season's about. But I think... Secretly, if you you know went behind the scenes and asked them that, they said no. They they probably want to get up and get out of this league as soon as possible. Um, yeah, the problem is, Martin. You know, as football fans, you know we were all saying before the start of the season, oh, just finish above the dotted line. We all said that on here, uh, and I was as guilty as anybody. Then suddenly you you went at Scunthorpe on the opening day of the season. And then you start winning away from home and you're up in the top seven or eight. And then all of a sudden you're third. And at one point on Saturday, I think we were second. Um, you know, things have changed, haven't they, a little bit? Yeah, I mean, collectively, football fans are never happy, are they? Um, we're sixth in the league. We've got a, we've got a very good squad. You know, we're discussing all the sort of, should he be in the starting 11? Should he be on the bench? So we've obviously got a bit of depth. I, I think we've, we've got a squad that's capable of getting promoted so it's you know the management always talk about you know just staying up this season and i'm sure they don't really mean that i think they're just trying to to manage expectations but you know we we got we got a good chance of getting promoted i think we're probably one, okay you know we got simpson and mccurdy up front we're probably one backup sort of striker or forward away from you know absolutely being nailed on for promotion i'd say well, I think, Andy, you'd certainly look at the playoffs now, wouldn't you? Oh, without a doubt. I think the the thanks for thanks for being here ship has sailed, isn't it? We're now we're now impatient. We now want to crack on. I mean, we're in a not dissimilar position, perhaps, to where we were uh, two years ago, weren't we? In the, under the Wellens regime, uh, sort of around the edge of the playoffs. And yeah, I think I'd be very very disappointed now if we didn't get to at least playoffs. Um, and that's probably being a bit unfair. Um, but that's testament to how well things have gone, isn't it? Uh, that we're now sitting here, what, the end, middle of October, talking about possibly going up, like you say, that uh, that night at Melksham on that Friday, that sunny Friday night. Uh, seems a long, long time ago now. 
It certainly does. And, uh, you know, that, that moment at Supermarine when our new owner sort of walked around the ground, everybody went, hello. <laughs> Maybe things might happen. Um, this is from Phil. Isn't the biggest and most pleasant surprise so far this season is how much strength we've had throughout the squad. Imagine what more we might be able to tempt on board in January if we can maintain this form. Uh, from Steve, should they have sold Rob Hunt to Wrexham and cashed in? Um, I don't know how much was in that rumor steve do you know any more about that or not i mean there was a rumor that he was going was, there there was, but... a whis- there was a whisper but i think you know then you've been shooting yourselves in the foot because you'd have to go and find another replacement and rob hunt for this level he's pretty good and can you know quite comfortable in the in, in league one as well so no i think they're wise to wise to keep him but yeah, mm. i think like martin said one area they probably would need to strengthen in january will be up front yeah. you know well i think most people said that didn't they absolutely what was, what Clem Morfunia said, if they don't feel they need to get rid of that embargo, no. then they won't pay they the won't money pay to get rid of the embargo. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. And you can kind of understand that, really, in a way. But then the loan system is there, you know. Absolutely. Who knows? But do you, do you go for a, uh, you know, a 19-year-old on loan from a, a premiership club who's probably not used to the, the muck and bullets of League Two football? Or do you try and find someone that's on a free transfer that's probably about 30, 31, knows a bit about League Two possibly and, and could get you, you know, 10 goals between sort of January and May. I think that's, if, if we can, in an ideal world, go down that route. I think that's the best route for Swindon Town at the moment. And then Simpson's got somebody to learn from, hasn't he? Well, I, yeah, I think I, I, my personal view is he'll be one heck of a player uh, when he gets oh, older. Look I, at the size of the bloke. You know, he's 19, for goodness sake. I was at the the Colchester game and he, I think he lost the ball on the, on the edge of the 18-yard box. He made a long bursting run yeah. to win that ball back. It yeah. just, yeah, and that then that speaks volumes. I think you know he will he will have gone to have a, a good career, but he's still young, he's still learning, and I think this is probably his first sort of chance or first team football. So, you know, yeah, he will have bad games, and on, and on Saturday it just goes to show the fans see a different game because some texts are reading out were knocking him, some were you know supporting him. It was a real sort of mixed mixed reaction he's getting at the moment, but you know he's got his goals. He's not going to be. A, I don't think he's going to be a twenty goal a season man yet, but. You know, in a few years' time, yeah, he, he will be, and hopefully, he'll learn learn a lot here and, and, and go on have a good career. Yeah, he did a similar thing at uh, Salford, I seem to remember, which is an extraordinary thing. He, he lost the ball, but then wasn't going to give up. And actually, I've noticed he's been playing with a with a bandage on his hand, hasn't he, the last few games? So, I don't know that there's uh, uh, an injury he's got there. Um, Martin from David, this is: Do we need an FA Cup run or go from promotion? Uh, from Anthony, let's do both. I'm not terribly sure what an F- FA Cup run is. Um, if you could explain what that is, I don't know. Uh, Crew Alexandra away. Interesting game. So do Crew go full strength or not? I think it's not the most glamorous time paper, but I think it's a good tie for us. We know Crew will play football. Um, we, we're suited to playing on the breakaway from home. I think the fact that Crew are in the relegation zone in League One will will work in our favour. I mean, how many times do you see FA Cup ties? The teams that teams that are doing well in their leagues are beating teams in upper leagues that are, you know are struggling. I, I really I think we've got a great chance. Um, I'm relieved we've got a football league team. I mean, if we've if we've got a non league team, are we going to have another upset? We've had so many of them in mm-hmm. recent years, and like you say, we're overdue an FA Cup run. When was the last? Real FA Cup run we had. I mean, we had that Wigan. When we beat Wigan, got uh, yeah, yeah. We beat Wigan. Less less than the next round. Yeah, you're probably probably looking. Have we made made the third round since then? I don't. If we have, it's only been once or twice, isn't it? We I don't think we have. And then Brown got sacked. So that's that's about a success, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Think, yeah. You probably have to go back to the mid nineties, I think, Vic, when we mm. played Southampton. Um, yes. One one. At the county ground with, with, with Kevin Hallock, we went one up, and then uh, Gordon Watson got that equaliser. But then we lost, was it 2 0 away at the, the Dow? So that was 95 96 when we, I think that was the fifth round. Um, it was because we beat Oldham, I think, on the Monday Martin, night. Martin, Martin Ling, Ling's late goal, yeah, the head kick at the uh, town end. And I think, yeah, Duke on the way as well. Um, the Paul Bowden spectacular goal. So, yeah, you know, they have happened, but they're <laughs> very few and far between. And they it are. The other thing, Vic, is we need the money, Sorry. really, don't we? Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, £22,000, I think it is, for this one. 22000 for the winners. Plus a cut of the gate you get, don't you, uh, in FA Cup matches. So 25% of the gate, is that right? If I remember rightly. Um, right, um, um, Andy, this is from 
Pete, uh, is, is it realistic for Simpson to play 46 games or even all the games until we can get in a second striker potentially in January? It is a lot to ask for a young bloke to play up front as he has done most of the season on his own. It's a big shift to put in, isn't it? As we said, you know, he he's he's doing that and he's getting better and better at it. Um, he's If you're just playing the one up front... Uh, I know sort of Harry McCurdy was playing off him a bit on, but if you're predominantly playing him out front, you, he's that's a lot. That's a lot to ask him. Is he is he only 19? I think it's an enormous responsibility. And 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 yes, to do that all. And I think we saw at Rovers. I mean, he was uh, he was pretty to be fair, pretty innocuous that day. Um, and you're going to get days like that. So um, it is. I think it's tough to ask for it. And 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 yes, let's have a look in in the January window. Let's hope that maybe we could pick up something like a Mark Richards that we got a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. I think we picked up in the January window and he knocked in sort of about a dozen goals come the end, didn't he? That yeah. would be ideal. And then again, he's a he was an experienced guy that, that Tyrese could learn off. Um, so yeah, I think we, that that that's that point's been made, isn't it? Um, I want. Can I just make a mention about Crew and just just to put everyone, yeah. up, you know, can anybody remember the away game at Crew last year and that sort of fifteen minute period? So just just to remind everybody, when I think they scored three and probably should have had about seven or eight, mm. but I'll, um, uh, they always give me the EBGB set Crew. Um, they always seem to be a lot better than us. I think it was a couple of years ago we we went three nil up there and got absolutely battered. Um, so beware. <laughs> They're a good you know, team. They are, they are a good team. <laughs> and I, I, actually, they were the best team that we saw, uh, I was going to say, not last season, but the season before, wasn't it? When we were actually yeah. watching football. I think they were the best team they that we good. saw. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, from Tony, we need an FA Cup run. It's money in the bank to help the club's finances, which you were just talking about. From Steve, are we missing young Scott Twine? Well, I think that ship has sailed, sadly. He's gone off to MK and he's ploughing a decent furrow there, isn't he, Steve? Needle. He's doing all right, isn't he? Yeah, as he banged in a hat-trick a couple of weeks ago, didn't he? For yeah. Him? So, uh, no, he's settling quite nicely up there. Yes, we are. I think that's the obvious answer to that one. Um, you know, it'd be nice to have kept him. Um, but, uh, you know, if a bigger club comes calling, if you want to call MK a bigger club or a higher division clubs come calling, <laughs> you're, you're going to go, aren't you? You're going to go. Well, it's a, it's a, you know, I mean, he gets noticed at MK Dons. Uh, he's one below the championship. You know, obviously his career's got to take uh, precedence, and um, you know we wish him well. Uh, I think, absolutely. You know, he's obviously offered terms at Swindon, but he decided to move elsewhere. So we wish him well. Um, from Steve, this is a very interesting one. What does the panel think of all the visitors' time wasting at the counter ground? Ref seemed to turn a blind eye. Dale's goalkeeper was a disgrace. Now, Martin, I have a view on this. If Swindon did that away from home, I'd be going. Good on you, lads. Um, because sometimes I think we've been a little naive in game management. And you know what football is like. They'll push it and push it and push it until they can't push it anymore. And if you're Rochdale, you're two one up away from home, you've been on a poor run at Swindon, you're not going to go, OK, lads, come at us, are you? I, I think all teams do it. I just think naturally as fans, we don't notice it when our, our keeper does it. You know, um, I, when we're two one up, really, it's... It's immensely frustrating. It's it, ultimately it's down to the referee, and it they need to get a grip on it sooner. It seems that you have this time waste, and the referee so often gives a yellow card in like ninety second minute, and there's just no no deterrent for it really. I mean, have you ever seen anyone get, get sent off for time wasting two yellows? I mean, no. it probably has happened, but it doesn't it doesn't happen very often. Uh, yeah, it's 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 frustrating, but it's what do you call it? Game management. Yeah. He I did think... give six minutes of injury time. I'm trying to recall if there were if there was any sort of serious injury in the second half. So whether any of that was as a result, he seemed to be quite relaxed about the goalkeeper taking the time, didn't he? He didn't sort of like um, really. So whether he was just adding it on, um, I don't know. Yeah, it's a minimum of six minutes, isn't it? We know we always mm, forget mm, that, don't we? And, uh, and I will mention Salford, which I think Andy, you you were there. Mm, uh, mm. I think Swindon managed if i might use that word that game very well they did they did yeah as, as it's martin said you know it, it's it's very frustrating it's happened to us but if we're uh one nil up tomorrow night um you know the corner flag beckons does it not you, you would hope so let's put it like that mm-hmm. yes uh mm-hmm. steve what's your view on that it's it's part and parcel that it's the dirty tactics isn't it you know we they, we all do it but they're all guilty of each 
team. But I don't think what they realise is when the ball's out of play, the referee's having the time on anyway. You know, the way you're going to waste time is by dribbling into the corners or just kicking it long into the opposition half. Into that, that that's when you hold up the ball there. That's when you're going to be wasting the time because, you know, from a goal kick, the the refs stop the watch. He's adding it on, so you're not the goal. He's not really wasting. He's not wasting any time. In fact, he's adding more on and could put his team into to more danger. Um, and it proved it because obviously six minutes were up on the board in 93rd minute. Johnny Williams pops up with the with the equaliser. So yeah, that's that's always been my view that if actually mm. if you you waste time, yeah. it's, it's like it's, the crowd hanging on to the ball. For goodness sake, just give the yeah. ball back because if you hang on to the ball, that add time you're, is added on. You're adding your time on, yeah, and you you're might not, well concede. Yeah, absolutely. You're not wasting. You're not wasting any time whatsoever. It's all being clocked and added on. So no, that, the way you're going to keep the keep hold the ball at the other end, waste the time up there. Don't you know? Don't mess about goal kicks. Uh, from Ian Martin, will we lose any of the loan players in January? And from Phil, if you could pick just one of our loan players to buy in January, who would it be? Well, that's a very, very good question, isn't it? I mean, who have we got? We've got Kessler Hayden. Uh, we got Gilbert. Richmond. I mean, Gil Gilbert's a bit forgotten, actually. And I think he's quite talented. I think we there's more to come from him. Um I mean, Hay Hayden Hayden looks impressive, doesn't he? He can get up and down that mm. right hand side from right wing back. He he suits our system very well. Um, I'd probably I'd probably go for Hayden to be honest. Although, you know, Critchlow's fitted in fitted in well into that back back three. We haven't got many centre backs on the books, so um, you know that's the only thing I'd say about our squad at the moment, um, apart from centre forward. We're playing three at the back, and we've only got four main centre backs. One of which is about Baldry. Baldry's, you know, always injured. Conroy's always, you you always feel he's got an injury ahead of him. Unfortunately, he's always on the on the limit. So another centre back wouldn't hurt either. If they sign Romano Critchlow in January, Andy, I'd be absolutely be cuffed a little bit. So I have to no say. doubt he has been absolutely outstanding, hasn't he? I know for, for such a young lad, you keep you keep forgetting that what's he twenty one something like that. He is magnificent. Uh, uh, he, he is possibly my you know obviously Jojo's been fantastic. He could be close to my player of the season because. He very rarely makes many mistakes. He, he, he mis misplaced pass for the first goal on Saturday, and that's the first time I've seen him really make a mistake for quite some time. So, I think he's, he's, he's played every single minute since he came on as a substitute against Scunthorpe, and that includes uh, the whatever the, it is. Cut this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, and when he came on at Scunthorpe, he just—I think he did—he not come on at left back. He just—he just had that uh, air about him. So, you're not going to take this shirt off me. He just he just fitted in, and he was just so confident from them from because uh, I think if I'm right in, in saying that was near the sort of game management time, wasn't it? We were I think we came on when he was about three one up, so yeah, we needed to close the game down, and, and and he looked as if he'd been there all the time. So no, I think he'd signed about uh, twenty four hours before as well, hadn't he? Yeah, that's right. Know. That's right. Yeah, he was one of the later ones, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, going back to the time wasting thing uh, from Tom Rochdale, shot themselves in the foot if they hadn't wasted so much time, they'd have won. That goes back to what we were saying before. Um, controversial opinion play two times 30 minute halves stop the clock when the ball is out of play now they do this Steve of course in um, uh, rugby now uh, there's a you, you know you go into the red zone and play for however long that is so they, they've always done it in American football uh, basketball they do it in I mean, games can last an awful long time. I and mean, I've, I've seen American football matches gone for four hours, which, you know, <laughs> hey, <laughs> by then you've lost the will to, well, to anything, quite right. frankly. Um, is, that a, is that a possibility? Not not, not for me. Um, no, no, just a simple no. I don't want to, don't fancy sitting on the four hours on a plastic seat. As, as comfortable <laughs> as the ground is, four hours is a very long time. Um, no, I did, it's, look, you know, that, the time wasting thing, I think the players have got to understand how to use that time wasting. Um, that's the only thing, you know, they did shoot themselves in the foot on, on Saturday. Um, no, it's 45 minutes each way, you know, had a bit of injury time on, it makes it more interesting. And you know, rather than just booting the ball out of play after sort of 80 minutes and you know, it's all over. So you still got a little bit of hope and a little bit of chance. Come on, lads, we've got six minutes here. Let's, let's really go for it. So it adds to it. No, keep, keep it, keep as is for me. In the old days, of course, only Andy and I remember this, but in the old days, you weren't told how many minutes were a minimum to be added on. You just kind of had to guess and hope that you had enough time to get back into the game. So it is a relatively modern 
um, mm -hmm. innovation. And if I remember rightly, they used to hold up a little board with six written on it, didn't they, to begin with? They didn't have the electronic thing which said so. Yeah. Um, so what's your view on that, Martin? Um, two 30-minute halves or leave as is? It's a tough one, isn't it? Because, you know, we've had 45-minute halves for, like, as far as I'm aware, for the entire entirety of football has been going. So, Although I think the rules say two halves of equal duration. Right. I mean... What it needs, I'm sure someone's got the stats to hand. Just how many minutes is the ball in play for would be my first, first question. 67, isn't it? Something like that. 67. So, Something. you know, is there is there a train of thought that you have two 35 minute halves to get your value? Um, it would certainly get rid of all this time wasting. But I don't know. We're all we're all so set in our ways at, in football. We'd be we'd be very uncomfortable with changing it. I mean, Christ, we've. Um, it's been tough to take, and it getting these under twenty one teams in in the in the in the football league trophy. We don't adopt well to trade change, do we? Even if, even if this, in my opinion, perhaps would be one of the better changes. Andy, we'll use a cricketing analogy: the hundred. So, um, uh, mm, okay, <laughs> yeah. no, I'm I'm. No, I say I, I I do believe that it'd be interesting to see. It, ask the referee how much how much time he added on for time wasting on Saturday. As I say, six minutes, and that worked. Uh, and it, it goes it goes both ways. You know, it is intensely frustrating when when you see teams do it. Um, you know, we have a laugh. We, we we're not very good at going into the corners and, and wasting time. I mean, it's not very nice. But um, you know, like I say, tomorrow night, uh, if we're one if we're one nil up, um, <laughs> I, I don't care what happens. You know, they can all get booked for time wasting. As far as I care. If I've never been to Sutton, but I'm guessing that the stands aren't very high, so I would imagine uh, right. to kick the ball over the top of the stand mm. as much as possible. Mm. Apparently, the ball is in play for less than sixty minutes. Less than sixty. Which says it all. Right, and um, here's a, an email slightly off the subject of, uh, of the game, but to do with information really from uh, how we find out. Uh, this is uh, from Steve. Hello to you, Steve, and thank you very much for the email. Uh, evening, Vic. Shame about the result. Uh, should have won, but seems our players are shot shy. Um, several chances second half, but chose to pass back. Mm, discuss. Anyway, my point about the e the Swindon. I was going to say the evening advertiser. That's how old I am. The Swindon advertiser. You have to subscribe for this and that. Uh, we should not have to pay for info from our team. I've not read our chief executive's update on progress with ground purchase, etc. The plan to be open and upfront with fans, great, but at a cost. Many fans now don't bother with the paper on principle. Um, rant over. Look forward to the panel. Steve, thank you very much, Steve, for that. And we've uh, got in touch. Uh, we've got a bit of a, um, a statement here. I'm just going to try and find it. Again, I'm going to have to scroll down. So, again, uh, bear with me. Um, Right. Uh, 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 uh. Gosh, so many things coming in. I can't. Uh... Here we go. Yeah, um, this is what we can say. Um, uh, we've got a couple of lines about this. Um, we understand it was a news quest wide decision and they are the company, I think, who uh, only think the Swindon advertiser news quest wide decision. And we will look to get someone on at a later stream. Now, the point about this is. As we know, local newspapers are really struggling at the moment. And, you know, they're down to staff who are working two days a week, not not seven days a week. Martin, what's your view? I mean, the, the thing I most find most frustrating about website is privacy things. When you have to accept cookies or not accept cookies, for goodness sake, we've done that. Can we move on and get them out the bleep bleep way? Uh, what's your view about paying a subscription to read the Swindon Advertiser? Um, well, I mean, I wouldn't pay a, a subscription to read the Swindon Advertiser. I haven't really picked up a Swindon Advertiser paper or looked at it online for about 10 years. I just get my information on Swindon from other sources, rightly or wrongly. I, I just think it, it's sad for local papers and the local, um, what's the word, journalistic industry. But times times change, I think, um, as, as sad as sad as it is, I, I must say most of the information I get on Swindon uh, is is via Twitter. Um, you know, looking at articles on Twitter and that, I get a lot of my information there. Um, no, I mean, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't pay to get my information. Interesting, and um, Andy, I think you will know. And I, I, you know, the 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 only way we used to find out information was the back of the Evening Advertiser in years gone by, with the, the great Clive King writing his articles. Right. 
you know, that was the only football, way we did find out, wasn't it? I think as Football Phil once said, back of the advert, wasn't it? Something like yeah. that. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, and that's right. It's, you're absolutely right, Martin said. It's time has moved on. Um, and not only can we find that information, I mean, sometimes, you know, if you go on some of the social media pages, you can get it sort of third, second, third hand, can't you? Someone's posted that, that on. And I, I do see both sides. Um, you know, where I live, uh, we still get a daily, we still manage to get a daily sort of, you know, the Dorset Evening Echo. And it's uh, Dor the, uh, the Dorset Evening, it was the Dorset, it's the Dorset Echo. Hmm. And I mean, how it how it survives. So it does need that sort of revenue. But yeah, I'm, I'm not convinced that... I think it's like player ratings behind a paywall, things like that. I don't know. But uh, yeah, mm. it is an interesting point. I mean, I always remember, um, Steve, when my in my days in that building in, in Old Town, uh, yes. <laughs> living in abject fear of reading the back page of the evening advertiser and seeing that they got a story that I hadn't. And uh, yeah, you know, I think those days have gone, haven't they? They have because we all get the same story now. Um, yeah, it is a shame. It'd just be interesting to see whether the, the I know they say it's a news quest to take upon it, whether the news quest with the other clubs that they cover, whether they have to pay two pounds to, to read their news as well, whether it's just a Swindon Town thing. Um, you know, they're all about the communication with the fans and everything else. And then you get two lines and to read on, you've got to pay two quid. Um, I mean, we, we I say we, BBC Radio Wiltshire, we, we have uh, we've had them on before. Um, you know, Rob Angus, he came on kindly a couple of weeks ago, and I think we, you know, he's given us regular updates as well, you know, before the games, um, when we, when we can speak to him. So, you know, we, we get good communication with them, but I, I do think it's a bit of a you know, it didn't happen last season, it didn't have this last season. I, I don't know whether this is a, a blanket news quest thing. Um, we didn't have to pay to read news then, so no, it's a, it's a shame it's gone down that route. Whether they're just jumping on the, the, the bandwagon, as it were, to, to make themselves, you know. I, I don't know. It, riding on the Swindon Town wave, let's try and get as many things going for us as we can. Let's get some more revenue coming in. I don't think it's going to work personally. I think it's put a lot of people. I don't think it's been a great uptake in it from what I've seen and heard. Um, no, it's a, it's a shame it's gone down that route. And it'd just be interesting to see if Newsquest have done that with other football clubs, or whether it's yeah. just a, a, a Swindon advertiser thing, you know. Make yeah, and, and by the way, this is no way a, a criticism of Johnny Leefield and, and the people who work at the advertiser because you know they do work very hard and they've got well, very limited time to do things. Yeah, so uh, we should say that. And uh, from Anthony, club news and interviews on the future should be from the main site, not the advert. Um, from David, bring back the football pink. Ah, oh, those are <laughs> the days. Goodness me. Uh, from Phil, I live in France, so the advert online can often be my only source of news about the town. Uh, I'm still not prepared to pay to read articles when I can go on Twitter, which is what you the point you made, Martin. But, you know, Andy and I, we both live in different areas, so we can't mm. get a physical copy of the paper. So, you know, we have to get our information online. Uh, right, let's move on then, um, because time is, is running out, and we ought to talk about tomorrow night. Martin, um, they're going well. Um, from Malcolm, could it be because NewsQuest is based up the road in... Yellow country. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think we know what you mean by that. Um, tomorrow night, they're going well, Sutton. They're doing all right, aren't they? It's going to be a difficult game, I think. Yeah, I think it's going to be one of the trickier games. Um, I hear they're quite a big side, which would be a, a bit of a different test for us. I, th I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be quite, quite a hard game. I, I'm not expecting to win it, actually. I, if you're asking me for a prediction, I don't know if I'm preempting your next round of questions, but. I'd probably go for a one or draw. I think it's going to be a tough examination tomorrow. OK, well, you kind of did preempt what I'm going to say. So, Andy, your view on tomorrow and your prediction. Tough, tough, tough call, isn't it? I mean, the last time the last time we scored there was Howard Pritchard. There you go. There's one for you. Um, wow. Four wins on the bounce, I believe. Uh, Saturn and, uh, yeah, we're tough one. I, I'll, I'll, I'll happily take a draw tomorrow night. But then, having said that, we need to catch up the two points from Saturday. So now let's go, let's go and win. One nil. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, they had a terrible start, didn't they? Um, they did. mm. uh, but they they seem to have found their feet now mm. in the in the football league. This from Pete Sutton have won five in a row, scored four goals twice. We're going to win three nil. So that's confidence for you, Steve. Uh, what, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, you've you've got to go and hope for a win. You know, you know, it, it's got to be a win. I mean, the Sutton, they, I think. Was it the last home game? Was it they like conceded three? Was it against Port Vale or somebody? I think if I remember so correctly. So they are, you know, you can get goals against them. So, but no, I, I, I'm, you know, you've got to go there. I'm, I'm going for a two, two nil, a two nil Swindon for me. Hopefully, um, 
Yeah, although I've only seen him win away a couple of times. I haven't seen him win away that many Swindon Town. So, uh, no, 2-0. Two, two you, you've got to go and win, you, you, you know. Well, um, I, I, I as chair don't have to actually uh, offer a prediction. So uh, that, that's <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> Marvelous. Um, I'm just reading something that I've got now. Um, oh, okay. I'll, I'll give you an update on in a minute. Um, right. Thank you very much indeed, gentlemen. Our time is okay. almost. Up. I can't think of anything that we haven't included tonight. Um, unless you can. Can you? No. I think we've covered it. <laughs> yeah, we think we have. Yeah. yeah. First visit to Sutton tomorrow night. I think all three of us, are, all four of us are going. Yeah. So yeah. very much looking forward to it. And um, I just hope the weather's better than it was today. Certainly have they got a roof fun. is all I'm asking. <laughs> well, those of us who are sitting have got a roof. So, uh, oh, you, you, if you're standing, I'm not terribly sure, to be quite frank. But <laughs> if I might be a bit selfish, I've got a roof. That's all I care about. <laughs> I blame the person who's getting my tickets. That's all. Uh, no, there you go. Always a good thing to do. And and actually, on the subject of that, I did promise to give you the number for SAS. So, if I'll give you a couple of seconds just to get a pen and pencil, if you want to order seats for Oldham, do this on Thursday. They're open seven till eight at the county ground behind the town end. Chris, you got anything to say? Um, no, except thank you very much. Um, and yeah, um. We're going to what, set in tomorrow and let's uh, have a safe journey there, safe journey back and a good game in between. So, so yes. Yeah, so, but no, that's all from me. Right. That telephone number then. Um, the SAS details are also on um, the Supporters Club website. So if you want to go there and get all the details, you can. T Tony says 2 0 tomorrow. Uh, which is great from Phil. Thanks for chaps. This is the first time I've tuned in. I've really enjoyed listening to you all. So there you are. Thank you very much. Uh, the telephone number is 07535 07535 917872. 917872. Leave a message. They will get back to you. It's that simple. I'm done. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it, Andy, your first time. Lovely. Thank you very much for having me. Brilliant. Mm. No, fantastic. Thank you very much for coming on. Mm. So that's it for us tonight. We will be back next Monday to uh, review the um, Bradford game. And also, I'm sure we'll talk about Sutton tomorrow night as well. And so, again, have a look on the um, Swindon Town website for the minutes of the advisory board contact the trust or the supporters club if you've got any questions or if you'd like to bring us uh, um, any if you'd like to bring anything up we have had some through already which is brilliant so thank you very much stay safe and we'll see you next week bye bye cheerio